Hey everybody, it's Eric from epautos.com, your libertarian car guy here on a really miserable, rainy, and cold uh, day out here in the woods of southwest Virginia. I'm going to do a quick walk around of the 2017 Toyota Tundra uh, pickup. This is Toyota's 1500 series pickup. Um, a couple of interesting things about this truck. Some of you may have read my review and seen my video of the, um, the, the Ford F-150 um, that I had a couple of weeks ago. Uh, in which I kind of ranted about how cod piecing and over the top the proportions of that truck and a lot of other 1500 trucks are um, to such an extent that, uh, for example, uh, even a, a big tall galoot like me, and I'm 6'3", would need to stand on tiptoes just to get inside the bed or put your hand on the bed. But I want to show you something on this thing. Um, I'm just standing here, I'm not on my tiptoes, and I can put my hand down in the bed and I can almost lay it flat. Um, the bed walls also seem to be a little bit less high. I wish I still had the F-150 here uh, to do a comparison with, but um, the proportions of this thing seem to be um, almost within reason. Uh, this truck does not make me feel like I'm 12 years old again, uh, including the height of the roof. Um, I'm just about as high as the roof. This thing might be, I don't know, it's probably about even Steven. So I'm 6'3", so it's probably about 6'3". Um, the other ones seem to be considerably taller than I did. Um, something else that's interesting about this truck, I don't know if you'll be able to get a, a decent sense of this from this crappy camera of mine, which I do promise to upgrade one of these days, um, that makes this truck feel less huge. If you look at the front end of this truck, uh, look at the length from the uh, base of the windshield at the A-pillar, which is right here, uh, to the front of the truck, um, it's not quite, it's stubbier. It's not nearly as long uh, as uh, some of the other 1500s. And that gives the truck uh, a sense of not being quite so monstrous when you drive it. Um, notwithstanding that, there's plenty of room underneath the hood for the, and here it comes, drum roll, standard V8 engine. Uh, something else that distinguishes the Tundra from uh, the other 1500s, with the exception of the Nissan Titan, uh, is that it still comes standard with a V8 engine. And that's rather ironic, I think, given that this is, after all, a Japanese brand truck, even though it is built in Texas. Um, nonetheless, uh, it comes standard with a 4.6 liter V8 with a 5.7 liter V8 optional. Um, all of the uh, big three trucks now come standard with sixes, and uh, some of them, like the Ford F-150, have a V6 as its top engine with twin turbos. Uh, this has none of that. Uh, in fact, um, both of the standard V8s in this truck also still use uh, relatively simple direct port fuel injection, whereas most of the other trucks now use gra uh, gas direct injection, uh, which is a much more complicated system, and it's also a system that's got some technical problems. Uh, they've had some issues with carbon building up on the uh, back of the intake valves because the gas is injected directly into the cylinders, and so there's no solvent effect of the fuel washing over the back of the valve stems as there is in an ordinary PFI, TBI, or carbureted system. Um, now the reason why this has uh, not got GDI and has PFI has to do with the fact that it's an older truck. Uh, the last time Toyota really redesigned the Tundra was way back in 2007. So this is still uh, a relatively simple truck and personally I think that's great. Personally if I were going to buy a truck, particularly a truck to use for work, I would not want gas direct injection. I would want PFI. Uh, I also would not want an aluminum body. Uh, no offense to Ford. Um, steel is where it's at. Uh, if I, for example, back up, back up into something and dent and crease this part of the truck, this is pretty straightforward to fix when you have a steel body. Um, not so much when you have aluminum. It's much more expensive to fix aluminum. Um, now Ford has gone to aluminum and uh, they've gone to GDI and V6s and all of that chiefly um, because of the government, not because of what people out there who are buying the trucks actually want. Uh, the reason for the aluminum body is to shed a few hundred pounds of weight from the vehicle. Uh, the reason for the twin turbo V6s is to squeak out some more gas mileage from the vehicle, just like making it lighter is supposed to do that. Um, all of which would be spectacular. Uh, if the mileage increases were spectacular, but they're really not. If you check into the stats, uh, you'll find that the mileage difference is on the order of maybe five to six miles per gallon. Uh, and again, it depends on which configuration you're talking about, uh, apples, oranges, all else being equal. Um, but the point is that those, those, uh, those mileage increases, as slight as they are, uh, are of no real benefit to the consumer, in my opinion, 
you buy a truck, do you really care if you're getting three or four or five miles per gallon difference versus what the potential upfront cost is versus what the down the road repair cost might be for the truck? Um, so don't blame the manufacturers, however. They're doing it to comply with the government, uh, with, the, uh, with the fuel economy standards that the government continues to lay down and ratchet upward. And it's a real tragedy, in my opinion, because it's making vehicles ridiculously uh, complicated and ridiculously expensive. An aluminum-bodied truck, a truck with twin turbochargers and an intercooler, all that might look great on paper on the dealership floor. Um, I'm not sure how good it looks uh, out there in the world where you're working with the truck. Um, out in the desert where it's inhaling dust and maybe not getting its oil changed as often as it should, etc., etc. So with this, you get a simpler V8. You also get a standard 10,500 pound tow capacity, uh, which is more uh, than the other trucks with their standard, op standard engines and several of them with their, um, their mid-grade engines uh, and even their optional engines. Um, now on the downside, uh, you cannot get uh, this truck with a diesel engine. Chrysler does offer a diesel engine. And the other real hobble um, that has kind of limited what the uh, Japanese have been able to do with their trucks um, as far as making headway in the American market is that the configurations they offer are a bit less um, than what you'd get with a, uh, a Chevy or a Ford or a Dodge. Uh, you can still get this in a regular cab uh, and a, a, an extended cab and then like this one, the crew cab, with the three different bed lengths, this particular one has the, um, the really short 5.6 foot bed, which is mandatory when you get this uh, four-door crew cab. But they don't have the incredible range of configurations that you can get with uh, the other big three trucks. Um, so probably the main cross shot for this thing is the, uh, the Nissan Titan, which I like. The Titan's a really neat truck. And um, as a cross shop, you should be aware that it comes with only one V8, but it comes with a very strong V8 standard, uh, much stronger than uh, the Tundra standard 4.6 V8, but still they're both really nice trucks and I will get into uh, more details in the written review which should be up at epautos.com sometime this weekend, uh, coffee willing. Meanwhile I just posted a rant about our uh, orange-haired great leader and uh, how it probably wouldn't have made much difference if we had voted for uh, her um, since things couldn't possibly be much worse. Anyway, um, thanks for having a look, and we'll catch up with you again soon.